Hey everybody, Fishman here, and welcome to another video. This is another one of those videos where in a little over 10 minutes or so, I am going to try and cram in as much information as I can on a rather complicated topic. And that topic is, as you can see here, Mulm. And in its simplest terms, it is what it looks like. It is the end product of a digestive tract. Um, not necessarily just fish, but um, also snails, uh, scuds, shrimps, other invertebrates will feed on whatever food I'm feeding in the tank and usually there's plants in here as well so they'll nibble on those and from a uh, well from an Aquarius point of view uh, this is an end product and most people would siphon this off and throw it out but it is actually not just that it is also a home for a vast array of microorganisms, uh, not uh, necessarily just bacteria, but also, in my case here, I keep a lot of scuds in the aquariums and I feed a lot of uh, smaller live foods. And because I just took this tank apart, there are probably still a few baby scuds uh, swimming around under this and they feed on this as well. And also I keep shrimp and I don't think there was too many in this particular tank because it had a lot of <laughs> large Africans, uh, but there may also be a few of those. And as you watch this video, uh, just watch the fish's behavior and you'll see they'll go along and they'll pick at this. And it's not because they like the taste of, well, poop. Uh, they are looking for those little things and hopefully getting a, you know, a bit of a snack. Now, this is my seven foot aquarium. And as I said, I took it apart recently and moved all those fish out and moved these fish in. And in the process, I also uh, took some of the filtration capacity off this tank, the big five-stage airlift. And I did not want to remove this mulm at that point because, believe it or not, this is helping uh, keep the water clean. It is part of the filtration system. If I were to remove all this and clean the glass and just had, uh, currently it's a box filter, and I just put those, uh, I'm getting the bog uh, filter going, but it's just two species of sponge right at the moment, so there's not really much going on there. I would actually be able to see a little bit of a difference in the behavior of the fish. Uh, it's not enough, I don't think, for it to uh, be noticeable by the chemistry uh, available from those test kits, uh, but I think there would be enough for these fish to you know, not be as perky as they are here, as you can see. They're very active and healthy and happy, and that's the way I like my fish. So this, to me, is not unsightly. There are situations where mulm can get to that point where it is not beneficial anymore, and I am going to get to that as well. But I'm going to stick with this for the moment. So if I took the mulm from every one of my aquariums and could in some way manage to analyze it for what it contains, it would be highly unlikely that I would end up with uh, two that matched. They would be that different. And that's another reason why uh, my experiences with this material and yours might be different because you've bought fish from a different source. Uh, these are all raised by me, so I know they're disease-free, but if you end up picking up uh, fish from a store that have uh, some form of parasite or some form of uh, non-beneficial uh, bacteria or fungi or any other of a myriad of things, uh, you could end up with that in this material and it would be a haven for them while they're waiting for, you know, your fish to get a little weaker or whatever. But for the most part, if you can avoid that, uh, you are going to, have, like, <laughs> in other words, quarantine your fish. Uh, you're going to have a nice healthy material that, uh, is, like I said, is going to be quite beneficial to your aquarium in the right kinds of amounts. Now the easy way of destroying that balance would be to feed your fish too much. If there were more food being added to this tank than uh, the fish could eat, in other words a lot of it would uh, get down into here and become undigested food in this mulm, uh, there are other bacteria and other fungi that will feed on that and the byproducts, their chemical byproducts are not beneficial. They will cause issues for your fish. That is another reason why I keep an awful lot of invertebrates in my tanks because uh, snails, uh, scuds, shrimps, all those sorts of things are really good at getting into those little nooks and crannies that fish just can't be bothered with or uh, don't know that they exist and uh, get in there and get all that stuff eaten and then of course it goes through a digestive tract and then it's uh, perfectly fine. 
Now you could end up with uh, other chemical issues with uh, having too much mulm, and a lot of people seem to believe that you could end up with excessive nitrate. Uh, if your aquarium has got reasonable balance, and I've been trying to do that with uh, a lot of my other videos with filtration stuff, uh, that's not really that big of an issue. And of course, in time, I will clean this out because a lot of people uh, viewing these videos uh, will think of it being unsightly. And I like to, you know, present a nice, healthy uh, visual environment as well for uh, people to watch the channel. But I won't do that until I have augmented the filtration system. In other words, got that massive bog filter going. And then I will uh, feel more comfortable about having the actual tank itself clean. Uh, I, there is a filtration system I really want to uh, get to building, and <laughs> if I ever find time, I will. Uh, it's one where the actual tank itself is pretty much bare and clean. There's nothing going on in it at all except keeping fish, because I like to be able to easily catch fish when I want to bring them to clients and stuff. And all the filtration and uh, denitrification, all that stuff is going to happen in the filter itself. And uh, I'm going to try and make it as an above tank one, and hopefully I'll get to that relatively soon. But as always, coming up with ideas for videos is way easier than finding the time to actually uh, put them all together. So let's get on to uh, other ways that mom can be a problem. The most common ways this can happen is if you have, in this case, a rather dense plant that's near the bottom of the aquarium, so there's an awful lot of chance for a mom to accumulate in a rather a deep layer, or if you have a fairly deep layer of gravel, and you don't growl the vacuum very often and then you go in, in this particular case pull the plant out or you gravel vacuum that uh, section of tank and you disturb that bed uh, there could have been a chance for a fair amount of anaerobic metabolism to happen or at least a low oxygen level metabolism and some of those byproducts can be a little toxic so you have to be careful in that case to make sure that you do a little bit of a water change at the same time but in most cases, like this here, you just have a layer of it there. It's not a big deal at all. It is not going to get anaerobic in that small an amount. Uh, but if you, like I said, if you have uh, ornaments or rocks or that sort of thing, you can end up uh, with like sections of it that's going to get rather low in oxygen, and you end up with that sort of metabolism happening. Again, not a problem as long as you don't disturb it. But again, you're going to obviously move things around in your aquarium. Or you could accidentally end up, I've heard a couple of stories where people have changed the direction of flow of a filter and it dug a little bit of a hole and exposed a section that was anaerobic and that can be quite toxic to your fish. So that's the kind of thing you just need to be careful about. It's not, like I said, in general like this going to be any a problem at all. But whenever you have like a really vastly overgrown aquarium and you decide you want to go in and do a, uh, like a rearrangement of the plants or whatever and get in there and root around quite a bit, uh, definitely do a water change uh, right after you're done. That way uh, you can eliminate as much of that material as possible and it'll, it'll quickly come to uh, a balance again in the end. So as long as you keep an eye on your fish and like I said, make sure that that sort of thing doesn't happen, uh, you should be fine. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, mom comes in various kinds of what you call consistencies. Uh, not just particulate like I've shown you so far, but it can get to the point where it's kind of pasty like this. Now, this is a filter I'm cleaning, and on interesting occasions, this will actually get into the point where it's almost gelatinous. I have had that happen in a number of filtration systems over the years, and it's kind of interesting, uh, if you don't mind the look of it. And it is actually probably one of the more beneficial forms of uh, mulm, and as you can see here, it is considerably different. It has, a, like I said, a very interesting texture to it, and it is almost gelatinous. And I, like I said, the aquariums that I've found this in, uh, it is a much uh, healthier environment for the fish, and that in itself is kind of interesting. And again, I said my apologies that it's mostly anecdotal, but there is so much complicated uh, metabolisms and chemistry going on in this, and there's just no way of giving you an overview that would be consistent for all mulm. It just, it's just not possible. But in a generality, l looking at mulm, as long as it's not too much of it, and as long as it's not in a spot where it can't have flow through it, like either in a filter or 
uh, loose like this on the bottom of an aquarium, if it's stuck in a corner uh, underneath a bunch of plants, uh, it is quite beneficial. In those other cases where it has gotten too thick or deep and it get, has a chance of getting anaerobic, be very careful when you disturb it. Uh, you end up with a fair amount of, uh, like I said, anaerobic metabolism happening there. Uh, <laughs> hydrogen sulfide gas and various other very nasty chemicals and if you disturb those sorts of things make sure you do a water change and for the most part you should be uh, fine I don't think I've ever really had uh, any really negative effects but just keep an eye on your aquarium and keep an eye on your fish all right this is probably as much as I can fit in in about 10 minutes let me know what you think of this if you want more chemistry uh, I could try and do it but again it's not something I can do in a generality because no two moles are the same. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video and bye for now.